Let's say you're presented with this type of a problem. What is the equation of a parabola with x-intercepts at 4 and negative 3? Well, you might think to yourself, okay, that's nice and easy. I can go ahead and I can say, well, my parabola has to be equal to, y is equal to two things, such that x is equal to 4 and x is equal to negative 3. In order to find what goes in each of these brackets, you might say, okay, let's rearrange this to be x minus 4 is 0. That's going to be what's in my first bracket. I can then rearrange my second one here to be x plus 3 is 0, and therefore that's my second bracket, x minus 4, x plus 3. Let's go ahead and graph and see what that looks like. Okay, we've got a pretty straightforward parabola here. Our x-intercepts are exactly where they want, we want them to be. We've got a really nice vertex, a decent y-intercept as well. Let's go ahead and expand this. It's going to be y is equal to x squared minus x minus 12. What if I presented you with this parabola? y is 2x squared minus 2x minus 24. It has the exact same x-intercepts. It meets the criteria that I presented you with. An x-intercept of negative 3 and an x-intercept of negative 4 but it is nowhere near the parabola that you gave me. So how on earth we can we find the exact formula of the parabola? When you were finding the equations of lines, straight lines in grade nine, you needed two points. The two points would allow you to find the slope and you could use those two points to figure out your y-intercept. As we can see here, we need a little bit more information than just two points because two points can have a lot of different meanings. Here I gave you two points, but that wasn't enough information. We need a third point, and that's where this lesson comes into play. Now that you know how to sketch a parabola given the equation, it's time to figure out how to go backwards, how to figure out the equation when you are given information about the parabola. In order to find the equation of a parabola, we need three points. We need both x-intercepts, or just one if we know it only has one. And we also need a third point. In order for to find the equation, we need to use this template. y is a times x minus r times x minus s. r and s are the x-intercepts. We knew that from the factored form. We also have this a value here. a is your stretch value. Just like you saw in the video, your parabola could be stretched or, or, or compressed either way, and we need to know what this is in order to figure out the exact shape. We can find the value of a by using the x-intercepts in our third point, substitute everything in, and deduce what the equation is. Let's start with an example. Determine the equation of the parabola in factored and standard form. We have two x-intercepts located at negative 3 and positive 1. Our vertex is located at negative 1, 8. And our y-intercept is located at 0, negative 6. The first thing's first that we're going to start off with using our x-intercept. So I can jump right to y is equal to a, x plus 3, x minus 1. Again, it was supposed to be a minus, we're always subtracting, but I'm subtracting a negative here, which is why it becomes positive. X minus S, X minus one stays negative one. Then I need to pick a third point and substitute it into my equation. In this case, I'm going to pick my Y intercept because that's nice and easy. So I'm going to substitute in zero for uh, x and negative 6 for y. I can now rearrange and solve for a. I'm going to start by simplifying what's in my brackets here. 0 plus 3 is 3. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So negative 6 is equal to negative 3a. I can divide both sides by negative 3 
giving me 2 is equal to a. Therefore, my factored form of this equation is y equals 2, x plus 3, x minus 1. I was also asked to find the standard form of my equation, so I'm going to do that by expanding. x times x is x squared, x times negative 1 is negative x, 3 times x is 3x, three, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. I'm going to simplify what's inside my brackets here, leaving me with 2x squared plus 2x minus 3. And finally, I can use the distributive property to remove my brackets altogether, giving me y equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 6 as my final equation. Let's look at another example. A parabola has x-intercepts 0, 2, and passes through the point 6, negative 12. Okay, we are going to start with our x-intercepts and our template equation. So y is equal to a, x minus 0 x minus 2, so I'm just plugging in my two x-intercepts there. Now we need to find the value of a, and I'm going to substitute in the values I have of my given point. So y is equal to negative 12 times a, 6 minus 0, 6 minus 2. 6 minus 0 is 6, 6 minus 2 is 4. 6 times 4 is 24, so I have negative 12 is equal to 24a. I divide both sides by 24. Negative 12 divided by 24 is negative 1 over 2, so a is equal to negative 1 over 2. Therefore, my final factored form is negative 1 over 2, x minus 0, x minus 2, and we can simplify this even further by removing our first bracket to just be x, x minus 2. Now in order to get standard form, I'm going to go ahead and use distributive property here. 1 negative 1 over 2x times x is negative 1 over 2x squared. Negative 1 over 2x times negative 2 is just going to be positive x. So I have my standard form and I have my factored form. Let's take a look at a word problem here. The Dufferin Gate in Toronto is a parabolic arch that is 20 meters tall and 22 meters wide. Sketch a graph of the arch with the left base at x is equal to negative 4. Determine the equation of the arch. So a bunch of information here. 20 meters tall, 22 meters wide. We're starting at x is equal to negative 4. I'm going to start by drawing a quick sketch. Again, we wanted it to start at negative 4, so we're going to start here, and it needs to be 22 meters wide. So I'm going to do that. 22 meters wide uh, means starting at negative 4, it needs to land at positive 18. So I'm going to go negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18 is right here. So these are our two x-intercepts. I'm just going to label my x-intercepts are at negative 4 and positive 18 because we knew it started at negative 4 and it had a span of 22 wide. We also know that it's 20 meters tall so I need to figure out, okay that is going to be my vertex, okay, and I need to figure out when that's going to happen. It's going to be 20 meters somewhere. So if we go 5, 10, 15, 20, I know it's going to hit 
let's just draw a line here. Somewhere it's got to be 20 meters tall. Okay. Well, we know that the vertex is located exactly halfway between the x-intercepts because it's located along the axis of symmetry. So we need to find our axis of symmetry. Our axis symmetry is going to be located halfway between negative 4 and 18. So we add them together and then divide by 2. Negative 4 plus 18 is 14, and 14 divided by 2 is 7. So our x value of our vertex is at 7, and so our maximum, or our vertex, is going to be located right about here, where those two lines cross. This is going to be our vertex. In order to find, well, we know the coordinates of the vertex. We know that it's 20 meters tall. And now that we know the axis symmetry, so I can write that my vertex is located at 7, 20. And that's going to be the third point that we are going to use. I could sketch very roughly my parabola here. Oh, a little bit too far. And as much as I can estimate what my y-intercept would be, I don't want to make that estimate. It looks like it's going through 10, but I don't want to take that risk when I have some concrete information here that it lands at 7, 10. So I'm going to use that information to find my final parabola. I'm going to start with my equation. y equals a x plus 4 x minus 18. And then plug in my vertex. 20 is equal to a 7 plus 4 7 minus 18 7 plus 4 is 11 7 minus 18 is negative 11 11 times negative 11 is negative 121 and so we need to divide both sides by negative 121 in order to get a A is then just equal to negative 121, or negative 20 divided by 121. We can finish off and write our final equation here. Y is equal to negative 20 divided by 121 times X plus 4 times X minus 18. And that's that, folks.